you know, going into client management stuff we talked about this today I was getting one client who was texting me really worried and stuff. And it's it's been a debate that's been going on since the beginning of practice of law is how much time you want to spend with your client and how much accessibility do you give. Now I I, I hate I might I use social media a lot to marketing, but I hate doing it practically and I use my phone for stuff and so I don't like when people text me but um if they need to I am down I gotta do it. Uh, how do you deal with accessibility like um there's this old school thought, and uh, the older attorneys I've worked with and talked to, they said, "Don't be too accessible because you'll lose value in the client's eyes, and they want to use it too much." But one of the things I've built my brand on is the accessibility uh, to me as as the attorney. Ninety-nine percent of the time, after we file the case or just the beginning, we get the things done fast. They don't even want to talk with me. But every once in a while, one client comes out and then wants to take all that time. Mm -hmm. How, what have you seen, how you dealt with this issue? So for uh, nearly six years uh, that I've been doing this, I've realized that the best thing I can do when I'm getting to know a potential client, not even a client yet, when I'm getting to know them, it comes down to, okay, are they gonna require more than the average amount of attorney time? Mm -hmm. Specifically, are they gonna ask questions about stuff that normally people don't ask? Are they gonna want confirmations about things that people don't normally need confirmation? And so I try to address it early on internally about how accessible I'm going to be. So in that way, I don't have a kind of carte blanche, oh, email me anytime, day or night, call me. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, I think early on in the process and the relationship, people do wanna feel like you're accessible because there's an insecurity there because they don't know you yet. Yeah. So I think if anything, I tend to, to rule on the side of a lot of accessibility early and then kind of wean it off as far as direct accessibility, i.e. texting or yeah. phone calls, and try to say for the sake of two things. One, uh, a record, so I always go email so we have a record to yeah, go back to, definitely. and then two, to kind of remind them both directly and sometimes more subtly and indirectly, this is a better way to communicate these types of issues because these are not emergencies. Yeah. But I do think you really have to be in touch with uh, how people interact, the psychology of people. If you get somebody that calls you who's really nervous and scared about all these little things, you need to put in your mind the likelihood that they're gonna want a lot of your attention. Yeah. And does that mean you're gonna price different? Does that mean you have to lay down the ground rules? Are you gonna be less kind of easy going because you know they'll walk all over you? As far as the old school mentality though, to your point, I think it's kind of like the idea of old school dating. Oh, if you're too accessible, yeah. you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna wanna date you. Right? And I think that's a that's a I just don't think that's how it is anymore. I think the consumer these days, especially the under 40 crowd, I think they want to feel confident early on and accessibility is absolutely at the core of that. Because if you're not accessible, it's kind of like, well, this guy is or this woman is, yeah. so I'll just go to them. And so sometimes it behooves you almost to an annoyance to be really accessible early and then again start trying to sunsetting that accessibility or transitioning to something where, for example, I get a call Somebody says, oh, I got, the, you know, I got my AAC appointment. I'll yeah. go. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> I emailed you the appointment notice we got as well, yeah. so I'm aware. It says, okay, great. Email me, please, if you have any other updates. I like to kind of keep a record of it. Yeah. I, don't, I, I won't have a record of our phone call. And I think by, by really putting it in terms that our, our clients and the public can understand, I think it says, oh, that doesn't make sense. It is good to have a record yeah. of what we're talking about because it not only protects us, but it also protects them mm -hmm. because if we say something – uh, or don't say something and then try to say, oh, we told you that, they can yeah. go back and say, no, see, it's not in the email. So obviously, if you're a heavy email like I am, you, met, you, want, you better make sure to be saying everything you're yeah. supposed to be saying, right? Yeah, that's why I like, uh, even my post-consultation emails take a lot of time to write because I'm like, got to make sure it's all there, everything we said, so it doesn't come back later.